please rise in body or in spirit to listen to the word of God from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of God for all the people of God. You may be seated. <clears throat> Friends, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, God, our rock and redeemer. Amen. So it is no coincidence that Easter is tied to the sunrise. Dawn is that luminous, liminal time when a bright new day is beginning, a day full to the brim, overflowing with fresh hope and potential. And it's no coincidence that Easter is tied to Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week and beginning of new routines. It is no coincidence that Easter is tied to Passover. Jesus, the Lamb of God, after all, celebrated Passover at the Last Supper, commemorating the Exodus story, a story in which each Jewish household marked their house with the blood of the Lamb before setting out on a great journey to a new place and a new life. And it's no coincidence that Easter is also tied to spring the season of new life. We are witnessing life emerging everywhere around us from baby blue jays emerging from their crackling eggs to rolling fields of blue bonnets rising up out of the dry rock. Truly, Easter is poised at the convergence of so many beginnings. And our liturgical calendar also recognizes this by placing Easter not at the end of the 40 days of Lent, but as the first day of the 50 days of Eastertide. And the 50 days of Eastertide always begin in this exact way. First, the sanctuary is decorated with lilies. Second, families don coordinating pastel clothing. <laughs> Third, the trumpets sound. And finally, we hear the most well-known story in all of creation. Again, year after year, we do the same thing in the same way. But this year, this year, the story may fall on your ears a little bit differently. 
perhaps the idea of new life might hit a little bit closer to home. You see, the thing that makes this Easter different from every other Easter is that all of us are standing at the edge of new life. We're all at the mouth of the tomb, at the precipice of a new post-pandemic world. The signs of resurrection are clear. Three weeks ago, COVID orders in Travis County were lifted. As of Friday, the number of Texans hospitalized with COVID has dropped to the lowest number since records began. And for the first time since March 25th, 2020, there were no COVID patients in the Austin metro area on a ventilator. Praise be to God. And so true, we are not out of the woods yet, but finally, finally, after two long years, we're peeking out of the tomb and we can begin to see the rays of a post-pandemic world rising. And so we carefully, hopefully step towards new life. And we know that we will not return to the way things were. Just like the Israelites, we cannot go back to Egypt, even if we wanted to. Because here's the truth, friends. Coming back to life doesn't mean going back to our old life. No. No, the abundant, new, expansive life God dreams for us, the life that is full to the brim, overflowing with newfound gratitude and wisdom, that life lies ahead of us along an untraveled path. But it's scary to step out into the unknown, even if we do know it leads to a better life. I know it was for me. COVID was not my only taste of death the past two years. Personally, I experienced the death of my marriage. Now, I know I'm not unique. All of us lost something, if not some one to COVID. Jobs, friendships, years of school, our joy even. And I know what you're thinking. A preacher should never preach anything too personal. And for the most part, I will agree with you. But it's no secret that I, your senior minister, that person who is supposed to be an exemplar of harmony and wholeness is now divorced. So I will confess, I went into the tomb about a year ago today. I went in when I was forced to face the reality that my marriage was over. And let me tell you, I stayed in that tomb longer than Jesus did. I, being only human, was not able to resurrect myself in three mere days. For months, all I wanted to do was crawl under my sheets and wrap myself in silence and solitude. But friends, no person and no situation can hide from the power of resurrection forever. That momentum that pulls us towards rising that Jesus set in motion on the cross. And so in that way, just as mountain snow and ice slowly melt to reveal springtime, to reveal bright sprigs of flowers, slowly but surely, I began to rise again. Rise again quite literally. It actually got easier to get out of bed in the morning. I started to catch myself laughing or find myself singing in the car. I could enjoy my work and my kids. It has taken me about a year to emerge from that tomb, and sometimes I still feel like I have one foot inside, but it felt like 40. 40 years like the Israelites just wandering in the desert, looking for a promised land. Because most of us experience resurrection like this. It's two steps forward and one step back. So this morning, I can stand before you like the women in our gospel reading at the tomb to witness and to testify to the power of resurrection, telling you if there is one thing I've learned from my journey back to life, it's this. You can't get back to life 
by going backward. New life always lies ahead of us, not behind. Resurrected people, they don't look and act like they did before. Just in the same way, a butterfly doesn't look or behave like a caterpillar. You will not look and behave like you did before this pandemic. Again, in our resurrection, this the story this morning, out of nowhere, it seems, two people in dazzling white clothing, gleaming like lightning, appear before the women at the tomb. Now, naturally, the women were terrified. Then the angel says to them this, why do you look for the living among the dead? Why do you look for the living among the dead? Friends, the same can be asked of you and me. Why do we look for new life in that which is dead and gone? Why do we try to get back to life by going backward? Why do we insist on clinging to the past instead of boldly stepping out into the new life God is creating? Why? Well, because just like the Israelites expressed to Moses, Their old life in Egypt may have been bad, but at least it was familiar. Similarly, God had to drag me out of my dark cave, my comfort zone, even though it was a terrible place to be because my new expansive life was unknown and scary beyond the valley of the shadow of death in a green pasture I could not yet see. And you, United Christian Church of Austin, you too have experienced the power of resurrection recently. Neither you or this church can escape the grand sweep of resurrection. And so we have come back to life as a church, not by going backwards, not by following any of the trusted routes we've traveled before, or even the paths tried by others. No. We had to forge our own path through death's dark valley by adapting and changing, adapting and changing, until finally we laid eyes on that holy banquet. And just look at you now, beloved. Just witness the signs of resurrection among us. We are worshiping together in person and spirits are high. Your church leaders are chugging along like never before. And you, you are welcoming new friends, feeding the hungry, praying for the sick, housing refugees, and building together a more just and peaceful world. We found new life, but it wasn't by going backwards. And you, each one of you individually, you also stand at the mouth of an open tomb, at the edge of a post-pandemic world and any other tragedies or traumas that you carry, the beginning of a new life. See, Easter is a beginning. The familiar sound of the Easter trumpets are now sounding in churches all over the world, but they're not commemorating a story that happened 2,000 years ago. No, the Easter trumpets are heralding a new day dawning, announcing a new era in which love wins over hate, mercy wins over vengeance, dignity over contempt, and life over death, and we colonize heaven here on earth. The trumpets rouse us from our slumber, stirring our courage to step out into the unknown, out of all the tombs that would cage us. The trumpets are calling. They are calling you back to life, not your old life, but a new, abundant life, a life filled to the brim with hope and peace and joy and love. The question for us this Easter Sunday, beloved, is, will you step out? Amen.